Hello again. Uh, now we are here with one of my closest friends and somebody I see as a little sister. Her name is Shannon. Shannon, how are you? Good. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much for actually, you know, giving me your your time and actually to have this conversation. Um, so before we continue, one thing I want to always uh, make sure I emphasize at the beginning of every episode is that this is just mostly for had to, to have a nuanced discussion about things about mental health and, and just have fun with the, the topic of the outdoors. And hopefully we can tie both of them together. Uh, we're not necessarily experts here. It's just, like I said, just normal people talking and um, hope the viewers can get something out of it and at least uh, enjoy the, the conversation. Yeah, of course. I love to kind of have, our, have your listeners like listen in and kind of help everybody out um, so we make it more common instead of just kind of a stigma around it. Yeah. So you, yeah, you basically nailed it. Uh, there's definitely stigma around, you know, mental health because the way it's talked about in the mainstream, it's mostly politicized and that's not what we're trying to go for. We're trying to go for the nuance, which is basically where everybody I think lies in that spectrum. So, um, yeah, uh, case first, uh, first basically introduce yourself and more or less what hobbies you like to do on the outdoors. So my name's Shannon. Um, I actually started out um, after I graduated college. I started out in real estate. So I worked at a really top company and I did escrow. And then about a year, a little over a year ago, I quit my job, moved all the way up to Northern California, and I started my own horseback riding program. So even though I taught horseback riding for the past ten years, um, just more of like a side job. Um, I started my full own business. Um, I have a show team now. I have two other employees. So it's just crazy to kind of think that I shut my whole real estate life down, moved all the way up here, and kind of went with my passion. And of course, horseback riding is outdoors, even though sometimes we cheat and we have indoor and covered arenas, but <laughs> I consider it more outdoor sport. Um, yeah, so I start out with one horse rodeo about 11 years ago. I started teaching lessons, and then now I have three horses in my program looking to add a couple more um so yeah that's pretty much kind of where i started yeah i mean uh, i wouldn't necessarily call it cheating because you do spend most of your time training in the outdoors and you know you got to yeah, raise the true. animals so I do, yeah <laughs> yeah i mean you can't just keep the horse indoors the entire time you have to you know let no, them i mean they are outdoors but we cheat a little bit no i'm spoiled on the east coast i got those indoor arenas <laughs> no not even that because even like fire firearms like you got to train in the indoors but you end up in the outdoors like when you if you're just shooting like for for fun or if you're going to go hunting so definitely not cheating i can it's still considered outdoors that's why i decided to have you on and um yeah like uh you and i met in college and uh it back then i didn't even know you actually knew how to ride horses so <laughs> that kind of came as a surprise yeah. to me when <laughs> she was like oh i have a horse wait what you have a horse i did not even know that so I know. It's kind of a, I guess with younger kids, so what I realized in the industry is you'll get a lot of young kids that learn to ride, right? So they'll be like 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and they're all into horses. Most of the time their parents will buy a horse or lease a horse. They're super into it. They love it, love it, love it. And then they hit those teenage years and they kind of stop. So I don't know if it's because they get distracted with friends or with boys or kind of that kind of program, but they definitely kind of lose interest. And then you'll see like later on when people are in their thirties and forties and they kind of want to get back into it. Like, Oh, I rode when I was a kid. I want to get back into it. So on and so on. But, and at least in my case, I've always kind of been the youngest person at my barn having my own horse. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it is expensive, but I've always made sure to put my horse first, made sure I wanted to keep him, everything. So it's just kind of a different style program because you get that kind of gap years in there where a lot of people just can't afford it. Yeah. Um, but you can do it if you want to do it, you know? Yeah, definitely. You know, like that new car. <laughs> Maybe I, just keep your horse instead, but... Yeah, I mean, we got you know, that. That's definitely something that we're going to talk about throughout throughout the podcast. Um, but you know, I wanted to ask actually, like, how, like, what made you like keep your your horse as like you know actually being you know training horses and riding horses? What made you like stick with that as a passion? Is just just something you like ended up like liking since you were a child, or you kind of see your horse as like not necessarily a pet, but more like just another like a best friend, and you just kind of want to keep that relationship going because 
Um, like you said, like there's a lot of people that not even just uh, for what you just said with the horses, but even like fishing, like I've been meeting a lot of people that they would, they would say like, Oh, I used to fish when I was, you know, when I was a kid with my grandpa, with my dad or something. And then when COVID hit all of a sudden they picked it back up. So, yeah. I mean, there's yeah, a, we definitely, going along those COVID lines, you definitely see an influx of people wanting to do outdoor activities, which I think is great because like, even though indoor activities and sports and stuff like karate or ballet are great, but there's nothing really like being outside and kind of experiencing nature in a way. Because, I mean, horses are nature. I mean, they're animals, and you get to spend time with them. And it's different than doing that versus like a gymnastics activity. So... Yeah, and uh, so I mean, I will eventually have like some kind of fitness person here, like just because the, you know the gym does help in terms of like mental decompression. But I mean, in terms, I mean that's not necessarily outdoors to be honest. But um, that doesn't necessarily doesn't mean that it won't help with the men- with mental decompression. But for right now, you know, outdoors is basically because like that just became my passion for the same reason that you know a lot of people picked up you know other act- outdoor activities uh, during COVID, just because it definitely helped fill that gap. Uh, you know, me personally, just being here alone in a different state than where my family's from, you know, that kind of definitely played a little bit of a, uh, a fact that definitely was a factor in how my mental health was deteriorating slowly. So if it wasn't for fishing, it'd probably be still going downhill, but luckily I was able to like, you know, climb back up. And, you know, I, I do think that there is definitely like an out the an outdoors activity that can help people. And, um, you know, hopefully it's like, it's something that they can find and be passionate about and then just kind of continue doing that. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's good for a lot of reasons. Like you, you learn a new skill, obviously, you know, that definitely helps, especially if certain, there's certain skills in you know, that are, out, that are considered outdoor activities, but they can help in survival. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, well with, uh, with that being said, like I want to discuss, uh, some things that aren't really talked about a whole lot, like for example, antidepressants. Uh, so I know, um, uh, if, as far as I know, there's two countries that allow antidepressants on, you know, for commercials on TV. It's us and New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's kind of where, I don't know, like, I do feel like there could be a role in, for antidepressants, but I don't think that it should be the first go-to thing, like, right away. Um, a lot of people see certain uh, advertisements on TV and they think, oh, well, I'm, I have all those symptoms. Maybe I should go take it and they go to their doctor and, and ask for that specific, you know, drug or whatever. Um, do you think there's a role in our society for antidepressants? And if so, like more or less, like in your opinion, like what do you think like that role should should be? Well, I definitely feel, especially in our society, pills are really over-described but at, or over-prescribed. Um, But at the same time, I feel like depending on your situation, so if you're really sad, you're not really feeling like yourself, and you just feel like you can't get out of that funk, I definitely feel like seeing a doctor, kind of seeing what you can go over, maybe get on some pills, help yourself out, um, and then say you feel much better, and then you kind of wean yourself off after you found maybe an activity to do, I think that's great. I don't really think there's a right and wrong answer in like medication at all and at the same time like for me i just really struggle with a lot of anxiety so a lot of social anxiety um am i doing things correctly am i am i making my parents proud am i really pushing my business am i doing these things right um so for me horseback riding and having that physical activity always kind of relaxed me so even when i was in that real estate job and i or even when I was in college, high school, everything, when I had my, when I always had my horse, I was stressed out and I needed somewhere kind of like an escape, right? So just like with fishing with you, you have that as your escape. So horses for me is my escape. But now, since that's kind of like my job, it's like I go there, and it's kind of a little bit more stressful. It's not that relaxation. So what I did to kind of have that work-life balance in a sense is I go in the mornings now and I ride my horse or I have a couple horses in training. So I kind of get that as my release, right? So I get to go ride, I get to go enjoy myself, I get to relax, I don't have to answer phone calls, I don't have to answer emails, I don't have to answer texts from all my clients just messaging me, messaging me, messaging me. Um, and I just kind of get to relax. And then in the afternoon when I go back, I take like a two hour break when no one really, it's not a prime less of time, go back and then work the rest of the evening. And that's kind of my, so I have relaxation in the mornings and then work in the evenings. So that's kind of what I've done. Um, but again, everybody's different. Some people don't have that 
escape. So if you live in the city, sometimes it's so hard. Like they don't, they don't have horses in the city. They don't have fishing. They don't have those kind of outdoor activities in the city. Um, so they kind of need an escape. Maybe they go running. Maybe they go to the gym, like you said. Maybe they do need to go to the doctors and kind of get a little bit of help. So I don't think there's any right or wrong. I think people can do whatever they want to do. But I also feel like outdoor activities really, really help. And even if you're on medications and you do take up that outdoor activity, it's still going to help you even more. Yeah, I mean, you touched on a couple of points there. Uh, so the first is like, like, what I told in my other guests, like you don't necessarily always have to be going forward, forward, forward all the time. A lot of people, um, I don't know. I don't know where this came from. Like, I don't know if it's because of like those self help people that, you know, want to push their book or their so-called program that kind of like to say, like they always say like, you gotta keep pulling forward. You gotta keep pulling forward. And, um, yeah, that's true. So for some people like a kick in the ass will do just fine. Right. But some people, if you, you, you know, you do a kick in the ass, it actually makes it worse. And, um, it's, it's another, it's another thing that I don't like that a lot of people think, uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but people think that, um, uh, mental health is a one size fit all type of thing. And I don't think it is. It's, it's, it, yeah. that's, yeah, yeah, that's a very bad way of like going about it in my opinion. Um, and you know, like there, there's another point that you talk, brought up where, where it's like, okay, well, some people don't have the access to just go out in the woods and like go hiking or whatever, or, or you know, do something. But um, I think that, yeah, like, you know, like you said, there is a role for antidepressants and, you know, you at, at the end of the day, you, the one, you're the one that needs to like dictate how you live your life. Right. But I definitely think we should definitely uh, not stigmatize as much um, asking for help because, um, you know, and that's one of the things that, I mean, I'm using COVID as an example because that's kind of the reason why I started this podcast. But like during COVID, you know, we were told to basically, avoid anybody like the plague and um that kind of killed human interaction so a lot of people that were already that were not necessarily mentally prepared to go through you know isolation because that's what you know the unintention unintended consequence of the lockdown ended up being it ended up being isolation some people lost their jobs and you know a lot of people don't necessarily you know i mean something that's new for our generation I mean, even for our century, to, the last time we had something like this serious was probably like, you know, 1918 with the Spanish flu. So mm-hmm. none of us really had the answer. And I think if we were just able to at least interact some in some shape or form, it'd be a lot better for certain people that, you know, aren't mentally equipped. And that's kind of one of the things that I was a little disappointed in all this because people was so certain people were advocating for lockdowns, which is, I mean, Again, nobody has the answer, so to the best of their ability, everybody's trying to, you know, give their opinion. But the unintended consequences, like suicides went up, you know, child abuse went up, other, other different things that, all that, you know, scars, like, for, for example, child, child abuse is scars a child for, like, the rest of their life. Like, you know, you talked about, like, the whole thing about, like, oh, well, am I, make, am I making my parents proud? Am I making myself, you know, fulfilling myself? And, you know, one of those things that helps for to build up confidence and self-esteem and you can't really build self-esteem if you know you have horrible interactions with you know your parents or whatever so um yeah so it's really one of those things where i I do want to encourage people to ask for help like even if it's somebody that you don't really know just as long as you want to vent or something um that's something that's definitely important even before going for like antidepressants and things like that even even before going to the doctor i would I would say, I mean, again, I'm not a professional or anything like that, but just in my opinion, I think talking to somebody first, that might just be enough. You never know. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, and there's definitely like there's definitely a lot of things that were already you know pressuring people in society even before uh, COVID. And um, I mean, just to kind of take it back a little bit, but like what you said about like you know you stopped, you kind of like reshuffled your your uh, your you basically had to work on your time management to make sure that you didn't bring yourself out with riding horses because now it's part of your business. So, I mean, that may be something that other people deal with. I mean, so. Oh yeah, for sure. It's so easy because especially someone that works per hour or has your own business, it's kind of like, Oh, well, I want more money. I want more money. I want to grow and to grow. And you just kind of get burnt out. And I definitely did that with COVID because we were shut down for a few months and so I was making anything I was just expenses 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 and mm-hmm. so then I got to a point where I was like okay well 
like I need to make it all back. Then I worked like one month in June. I worked the whole month, every day, every day, all the time. And I worked, work, 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 and I got so burnt out, and I just couldn't take it anymore. And I started just my anxiety started getting really bad, and I just really, really got burnt out. And so with that, you definitely I learned that you have to kind of take time for yourself and not just like keep working and make sure to have those one or two days off depending on your schedule and take care of yourself and do something you really like yeah really love, you yeah. know no yeah i mean that's one of those things where you kind of like if you're going like if you were going 100 miles an hour down you know your journey down the path of that you know where your journey was leading you it's not it's not in, like some people might tell you like you always got to be pushing through, but it's okay to stop. Like it's okay to stop. I mean, it's okay to slow down. I mean, even like when you, if you're slowing down, you don't like if you're driving a car, I'm using this as a metaphor. If you're driving a car and you're going hundred miles an hour, but every once in a while you kind of like slow down like 30, 40, you're still progressing. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. I mean, yeah, exactly. yeah we got to like enjoy little bits and pieces along we go along our journey for whatever it is like you starting your business i'm i'm trying also to start my business as well and i can definitely feel your anxiety especially with the fishing stuff where it's like before it's like all right well even if i didn't catch a fish like uh you know i'm still happy but then now it's like dang it i need to catch a fish because you know my social media is suffering so and you know there's definitely that pressure now too i'm just like dang it so um yeah it's there's a lot of anxiety but one thing that i do want to like um, discusses like when you talked about like um, certain pressures when you were growing up. I mean, I I feel that I think like I, I mean I feel personally like as soon as you enter like middle school, high school, that's when all the pressures start coming in. Uh, would, would you agree? Like would, would yeah, for sure. yeah? Would you agree with that? Like you know, it's like yeah, I don't know. It's 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 kind, of, it's kind of, like I don't want you to like you know pour pour your heart out if you don't want to like but like. Like, middle school and high school were definitely, um, I guess, hard. I was definitely was, like, the ugly kid, and I was, like, the nerd, and, but I was not smart. <laughs> and um, I don't know, it just was hard, and you just, I guess back then, like, now bullying is so such a sensitive subject. Like, if you bully somebody, yeah. you get in so much trouble. But back then, you really didn't. Like, people could bully, and the teachers didn't care parents were like oh well they're just being mean and it's just I don't know it's definitely a lot different now for kids I feel but at the same time when we got bullied we got bullied at school and then it ended when we get home and I feel like nowadays everybody has the social media right so they all have Facebook Instagram TikTok whatever they have nowadays and people just keep bullying each other on there so you get home and you want to relax and you can't you just get bullied and people are mean and like they tell each other you should kill yourself and I just like it's just crazy like I don't know I know a lot of people with like teenage kids and especially with horseback riding they're like well this is their escape this is where they don't have to worry about getting bullied and they feel confident and this is like their what they look forward to the most each week yeah it's just hard you know and I, I I guess I just don't really feel it from the aspect of I didn't really have social media when I was in middle school and like part of high school Same. and even in high school it was like just facebook and myspace and yeah. everyone just went on the chit chat it wasn't like bully town usa you know yeah so. yeah i mean uh it's different for for uh women and men i would assume uh just because like i feel like um the bullying uh, back then was more like uh well i mean i think it's still like this today but um it's more physical when it comes to like men uh, for you know boys yeah. whereas like where before you were just told like stand up to your bully stand up to your bully and you know sometimes that was enough um, but yeah. I feel like with women uh, it, it tends to be more cerebral um, so it's kind of harder for young women to like get out of that like even more because like you said like yeah. it used to be where it's like it's just stayed at school stayed wherever you come home you're good but with social media like you know I mean let's let's just be be real like women know how to attack you very 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 like mentally they're so mean <laughs> women can do that they're like so yeah so it's like men just understand like all right i'm just gonna punch this guy in the face or i'm gonna punch this guy in, in the stomach and stuff like that and that's the yeah. best that we can do we're not that smart yeah. so girls are emotionally abusive 
Yeah, I mean that. Uh, yeah, I mean guys can. I mean honestly, guys can be emotionally men, uh, emotionally yeah. abusive as well. But you know, like growing up, like the bullying, like it's, yeah, like you said, it's more emotional for a woman, especially um, because a lot of people think that's just like for a young teen. It's more about expectations, but I mean we're forgetting that other other women or other even boys are also like kind of like judging them on certain unrealistic expectations and things like that and i think if you if you get a teen more like distracted more busy like with the outdoors and stuff and you know you can essentially kind of avoid that a little bit um it, you know it just helps you know with the self-esteem and the stronger your self-esteem is the, hard, the more mentally prepared you are to deal with all that right so i mean like it kind of leads me to my next question how did you get into like horsing uh, horse riding horsing <laughs> How'd you get, yeah, how'd you get into horsing? Uh, <laughs> how did you get into horse riding like so young? And uh, do you do you think there's any barriers of entry for like you know anyone that could potentially keep them from starting so young? Well, I mean, I started when I was like five or six. Um, I started taking lessons. Um, I mean, I teach kids as young as two, but again, it really depends on the kid. Like they get some two-year-olds and they're just kind of stuck on that pony ride. But I still think it's incredibly important for parents to bring kids that young because they kind of get comfortable and they feel confident and they get to ride that pony and they feel confident riding that horse, you know? Yeah. And I don't really think, I think nowadays there's not really any barriers, you know, there's not physical barriers, not mental barriers. There's nothing like they have so many different programs. They, they have English, Western, any type of program you want, what do you want to do? And you can flip flop between different trainers and kind of see what you really like. So my big advice to people looking to kind of get into it is go tour places. So go call some places up or email them um, and see kind of what they have to offer. Is it in your price range? Um, is their community that they have um, something that you would think you would fit into. So if you're looking for that community aspect, instead of just going once a week to ride the horse, if you're looking for that community and that family, you should really go and see what that trainer has offered. Do they do they just like, oh, well, we just teach lessons and that's all we do? Or are they like, oh, well, we go to shows and we have this big community and we do this? Or is it more like, oh, well, we don't go to shows, but we still have a big community and we do potlucks once a month or we do open houses where everyone comes and we hang out and so you can find that community in kind of any sport but specifically if we're talking about horseback riding it's so important to find a trainer because I also feel like a lot of trainers are kind of snobby and so I feel like that kind of turns people off from kind of joining horseback riding yeah Uh, but at the same time though you just got to find your place. I mean, some people like that. Some people are like, oh, I want to feel elite and I want to feel really confident and I'm riding the best horse and I have the best trainer. And then some people, I guess in my program, I'm much more relaxed. So we went, like my kids and I went to a show yesterday and yeah, there were people that cleaned house with all the blue ribbons, but who had the best time? We did. And my kids, we had so much fun and we oh. had the parents and we had our little community there and we had some of my clients come and just support us and we had so much fun and yeah sure we didn't clean house but man it was our first show we did awesome all the kids were gleaming they were so confident they got their ribbons they felt so good about themselves and so I feel like you'll always have to be the best it's Mm -hmm. just kind of like if you feel good about what you did and you're proud of yourself like that's good enough for everybody yeah and um, to add to what you're saying I mean uh, the internet is ridiculously cheap compared to what it used to be and it's you know a lot more accessible nowadays um yeah granted that that could be a barrier of entry because i mean it's just because it's generally you know easy to access doesn't necessarily mean there aren't people falling through the cracks so but you have all the information almost available like we're basically yeah we're basically walking like computers nowadays with our phones like even just at our fingertips we can access whatever we want like uh, that's kind of how I pretty much was able to start fishing pretty successfully. Just the time that I wasn't going to the gym because it was closed, went on Google, went on YouTube, started YouTubing a bunch of you know pro fishermen, how to do this, how to do that, how to get into fishing. That's, that was my first Google search, how to get into fishing. And uh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, and that's I think that's the awesome thing about right now the the age we live in. You know, we have all that. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a matter of like you know I mean whether you're young or 
or you know older it's just a matter of like finding a passion right and um you know i think finding the passion and making making it your own is great we just have to kind of also uh understand that we shouldn't entirely depend on it because when there's the time where it might not be available we gotta you know figure out how to do a lot with a little so (laughs) and that's yeah and that's kind of like one of the things we uh we really definitely need to teach people and just kind of talk to people. I mean, I know like I have my nephew and he's not necessarily my son, but I do have a good relationship with him. And that's kind of one of the things that um, I do want to teach him is that it doesn't have to always go your way. Like it, it's yeah. okay. Like, you know, you want it to go your way and that's fine. You want to do everything you can and work, you know, the hardest that you can possibly work to, uh, to go towards your goal. Right. But if you don't achieve it, it's okay. There's a, uh, there's a lot of things that, you know, you can take away from an experience like when you're like, I don't know, like, have you ever like actually like been in a rodeo or something like that or actually like participated in like, the, I don't know what kind of competitions there would be for horses, but have you been in competitions? So I'm not a big like competitor. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people, there's two different types, right? Because there's the big competitors and then there's not so much big competitors and then there's probably like the no competitors. So <laughs> for me, in Southern California and riding Western, there was like no shows really. Like now they have a little bit of a better kind of show circuit in the Western world out there. But I also didn't have a trailer, I didn't have a truck, I didn't have any of that stuff. And now when I moved up here, I needed a truck and trailer for business, right? So now I can actually go to more shows and there's so, so many things that are more local. And um, so it's just, I don't know, it's just different now. So I'm able to kind of go to those things and kind of show off per se kind of what I can do and what my horse can do and what we train for and yeah maybe I'm not impressing everybody out there but I'm impressing myself and I watch my videos and myself running like doing barrels and kind of seeing what I did right what I did wrong what I can practice on so that also gives me and my kids another kind of chance to kind of see how we can improve and Mm -hmm. kind of what we can work on and focus on that instead of focusing on the kid that's bullying you at school, right? Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, well, today is Wednesday. I'm going to go do my lesson. I'm going to practice on this. And so, oh, Ashley from down the street's bullying me. So it kind of gives them a little extra, a little extra confidence, a little extra something to work on. Yeah. And you know, the, the sad thing too is that sometimes when somebody's the bully, they might also have their own demons that they're they're not mentally equipped to handle themselves as well i mean right i mean you see that sometimes with certain people and um Mm -hmm. like i know one person when i used to play soccer like back in when i was like 15 16 um there was one kid who was always a dick like just you know generally speaking we used to play on on opposing teams until somehow he ended up on our team and like you know there was no bad blood but like we were okay and then one day his dad shows up and his dad was just drunk out of his freaking mind <clears throat> and, yeah. he, and he's just pressuring the kid like when are they going to put you in when they're going to put you in and all this stuff and just being a complete jerk to to him and now it's like whoa now it makes sense why he's always angry like you know he has to deal with that like you know like when, when he's not playing soccer like, i mean i don't even know if he really enjoyed soccer anymore because of you know his dad mm-hmm. yeah so it's um it's tough when you see that and then um even now like with my nephew like i, I know like I hope that he never has to deal with that pressure. And if I ever have kids, I definitely don't want to kind of put him through that as well. Yeah, exactly. And you kind of live through life and kind of see what's right and what's wrong and how you can kind of be the best version of yourself. You know, you don't have to be perfect, but... Yeah. You can be close to it, right? (laughs) I mean, yeah, you know, but even perfection is is relatively... Well, it's relative, like, you know, because you have your... I guess you could say a checklist of what it is to be perfect. And if you meet those things for yourself and you're basically perfect in your eyes, but another person might be like, well, this person doesn't, I don't know, doesn't like cheeseburgers or something. So she's not perfect. You know, so it's like, yeah. it's something, I mean, it could, it sounds kind of stupid, but it's, you know, kind of like that. Like it's we don't, like perfection is something that's also not like a one size fits all type of thing. You know, it's like, that's, that's kind of why it's important to live life, not, kind of measuring up using somebody else's ruler or somebody else's measuring like stick or whatever but you gotta kind of like the only person you really should be over competitive is with yourself yeah exactly you know you're not the same person that you were the day before two days ago three days ago 
four days ago. You know, it's it's it, everything changes, and um, that's another thing we need to keep in mind with a lot of people. But you know, definitely having a community though still helps. I mean, still helps to like have that a little bit of validation from people. Um, yeah. But you know, it's like it's important. Like you know, we need to make sure we understand which uh, people that we have around are important <laughs> to keep around um, because that definitely helps. I mean. One of the things that I do like right now in the fishing world is that we don't talk about like, you know, uh, what is it? I can't think of that word. Uh, not conventional. What is that word? Uh, I can't even think of the word right now. I'm drawing blanks. Uh, what is it when it's like something that's like not taboo, but like, um, dang, I can't. It starts with the C. It's a word with the C. Um. I don't know. Anyway, well, I can't think of it either. So anyway, it's something that's like, um, like something that you know, it's kind of a little like gray area in terms of in insulting and not insulting, like controversial. There you go. There you go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that word. So you know, a lot of controversial topics. Like when we're out fishing, it doesn't really matter because you're just, you know, if, if you're competing with each other, you're just trying to, you know, get the biggest fish or whatever. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, like uh, it's 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 weird because. I've seen a lot of communities, like a lot of even families, like with the smallest of things kind of like split apart just because they don't see eye to eye. And it's, um, I don't think we're us as humans nowadays have, uh, these type of discussions, right. Where we're just talking about something that has substance and you know, if it's, we don't necessarily have to agree. Right. So, but <clears throat> one of the things that, um, I do want to get your opinion on is like, so divorce apparently divorces have gone up since COVID. Um, it's kind of, I, to me it's a little sad, but at the same time, kind of. I mean, it's it's gonna sound kind of messed up for me to say, but like, like I, it's a little bit humorous because it's like, well, you know, you're spending more time with your significant other, you should be happier, but yet because you know people are working from home or one person doesn't have a job. It actually worked the opposite way, you know? So what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, I feel like you can still love somebody so much, but at the same time, sometimes you need your personal space. So I know when, because Paul, my fiance, he works at home um, now, and which isn't bad. He's always kind of like half work from home, half went into the office. But now because of COVID, he's been working at home full time. Which isn't bad. I love it. I love it so much. It's so much fun. You kind of have somebody there all the time. But I know for him, like, he has been struggling with it. So even though I'm outside all day and my, and since I started working again, my life hadn't really changed, right? Because I saw my clients. I still see them. I still see people. I still socialize. But for him, he doesn't really get experience that. He's still stuck at home. He doesn't leave the house. He's stuck on work calls. And even though he does talk to people, it's not so much different than talking to somebody like face to face and hanging out with someone, like real lunch, green dinner, like talking to someone like business or on the phone. It's just, it's completely different. Yeah. So for him, I know that he struggled a little bit with that um, kind of being at home mentality. Um, yeah. For me, I just can't really weigh on it because my life has been pretty normal in the sense of mm -hmm. COVID when I started working again. So, yeah, I mean, the only thing I can really say it's like, uh, it's weird to me. I mean, I get that you need kind of like a, you know, your space, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've seen people that like, well, I mean, because they, didn't, they have their own business or whatever, like they're both working on the business. So they're both at work together, at home together. And um, they, from what it looks like, I mean, they may have their issues. Obviously, they're not going to like tell me what the issues are at. But from what it looks like, it looks like they're doing okay. Um I don't know. I think we definitely can do a little bit better in how we communicate with each other. And, um, I mean, it's one of those things where you go back to like choosing how you surround, like who you surround yourself with. Like, um, it, it's, it's really difficult to get to know someone like in the hundred percent before you decide, okay, you know, this person can be a friend or this person can be an acquaintance or this person, I don't want anything to do deal with them. Um, so that's why a lot of people, like, you know, when they have, when they think they have somebody as a friend, they do something bad to betray your trust. Then it's like, oh, well, you know, you know, is there something wrong with me? Well, that's, you know, it's not 
it, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with, with a specific person. It's just, you know, sometimes personalities don't mesh well. Yeah, exactly. I met a lot of people that my personality did not mesh well. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of losing you right now. Yeah, you zoom out of your camera, like you kind of a uh, your voice kind of goes out. Is it working fine? Yeah, it's a lot louder. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Um, yeah, so we, I mean, we all have those people, right? But like again, we have to make sure that we don't necessarily uh, judge ourselves by other people's standards, and um, it's hard. It's hard not, to, even though we know it, it's hard to kind of like, like, actually do it, right? It's just you know we're we're humans, we're flawed. Um, you know, it's sometimes, sometimes even like the outdoors won't necessarily cure that. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but it's, it's, it's one thing that, you know, yeah, just gotta keep in mind, like, you know, some people are not going to like you. Some people are not necessarily going to dislike you, but it's just, you don't mesh well. Like it's, 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 um, it's hard to really understand that as a team where I think you would probably need that the most because you get to fall into these little traps, you know? So, I mean, it, yeah. Exactly. I completely and 100% agree. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that I do kind of like feel that we can get out of like certain uh, like the outdoors is just the fact that you can like if, whether you do it by yourself or with another person, like whatever activity is um, like if you go camping like on your own, like you can spend time by yourself and like just kind of like reflect on certain things and just learn, learn how to, you know, spend some time by yourself. I mean, I think that's also important and it's kind of underrated. I mean, it's not to, you know, it's not to say that you don't want to be around any, anybody. Right. But like, like, you know, I don't know. What do you think? I know my favorite thing when I was in college or high school, college, and up until I moved out here like a year ago, I always had trails like off, off the property of the stables that I was boarding out with my horn. Mm. And I used to go trail riding by myself almost every day. And I loved it. It was so much fun. It was very relaxing. I mean, now I get kind of nervous about going out by myself only because I have to trailer by myself and haul by myself. So I'm not comfortable with that yet. But mm -hmm. I have met a lot of people on the trail that do do that by themselves. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, kind of being alone and kind of finding comfort in yourself, per se, and kind of thinking about life and kind of get your deep thinking in. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, and me personally, um, kind of a funny story. So I know I I recently discovered that I like to fish at night. Um, unfortunately, certain parks, you know, they have their maintenance going on like around ten o'clock. So it's like I can't be out there so long because like the sprinklers just start shooting water at my face. But the other day, <laughs> the other day I went to uh, the, to one of the lakes and we, I was by up by the marinas and um, I just posted up there and just casted out my line. And all of a sudden, I see a cottonmouth snake just swimming in front of me. Like, nope. yeah, exactly. I was like, nope. And I'm just seeing it swimming. And all of a sudden, it stops. And it kind of like, like, I kid you not, like, I, I swear, that, like, you can script this out any better. It stopped and kind of turned towards me. And I was just like, oh, no. And I'm just thinking. And I had my line casted out. So I was just like, kind of like, Oh, I'm scared. A little bit of scared right now. And then basically, I just dropped. I dropped the fishing rod to the side and grabbed the rock, and I threw it at it and just ran. Good. Yeah. Good. No, yeah, dude. Hell no. Like snakes. I don't do snakes. No. Yeah, that's the only disadvantage is like something bad happens. You're kind of by yourself. I'm... But at the same time, back in the day, you were a lot of times by yourself. You were traveling on horseback and fishing and hunting you know you're by yourself so yeah you know and i mean it's not like something that i'm gonna stop doing right i'm still gonna go night fishing yeah. every now and then but you know it's 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 i figured out that that's kind of a, a, a good way to for me to cope just for some reason something about the night vibes just kind of like i don't know it just takes all the, the pressure away like i could have like one bad work week and if i just spend one night fishing i'm good Le Total relaxation. Yeah, look, look. I mean, I I mostly just catch and release, but I think now now I'm gonna start targeting some catfish because I do like fried catfish. It is delicious. 
So you need to come out to Texas so we can uh, get you some fried I catfish. I definitely won't eat that. Why not? Not my thing. <laughs> you never, have you tried it? No, and I don't want to try it. How do you know it's not your thing if you don't want to try it? I don't know. I just like don't really like that smell. I like, I'm really picky. You can make me like a pasta dish. A pasta dish? <laughs> yeah, only pasta. No seafood. It's not seafood. It's from the lake. Nope. <laughs> it's from the lake. You said no seafood, no so fish. that means you can eat this. No fish. <laughs> Fine. Fine. No fish. Yeah. No, I mean, I, that's another thing that you actually need to start going uh, in terms of like ramping up. It's just like more of like the cooking stuff. Um, I did have some some awesome recipes recently that I kind of made for fish specifically. <laughs> but I know you're not ever going to try that even if you come visit me out in Texas. So. Yeah. I'll, like, fake try it. I'll be like, mmm, so tasty, and then I won't eat it. Oh, you jerk. <laughs> what about a uh, barbecue? Would you eat that? Yeah, I like barbecue. Dude, you got to come out. Like You you and your fiancé got to come out, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll definitely take you to some good barbecue spots. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, tr- it's the best thing ever. I mean, the only thing is, like, I mean, I love Texas. Uh, I can't picture myself living anywhere else now, uh, but... Me, I still miss the ocean. I'm not gonna lie, because that's kind of like. I know. Right? Well, you're not that far from the ocean. You're still in California. Yeah, but I mean, I live like an hour from the like ocean. Well, you know how how long the drive is for me to get to the ocean? Too long. Exactly. <laughs> Five hours. Oh wow. Well. I miss when I was like three houses away. That was the best. Oh, dude, I still remember that that night we. Uh, I, I think I don't know. I think it was for your birthday or something. We went to like Huntington Beach and um, like uh, I don't know what, what happened, but basically I overdrank before we left your house, and then uh, I ran. I just kind of like wandered off with one of your friends. He wasn't necessarily my friend, but one of your friends. Like he and I wandered yes. off somewhere else. But, you know, we were able to make it back home. And I remember, you know, I crashed on your couch. I woke up still drunk. And I'm walking towards my car. And I see two coyotes just posted by my car. Like, I don't know. I didn't even know Huntington Beach or Newport Beach um, had uh, coyotes. So, uh, I know. They're kind of like little pests. Well, dude, like you were like literally like right by the shore. Like not that far from the shore. Like you can almost like yeah, walk to really it. really nice. And it was good but, times, man. But the freaking coyotes! What the hell are they doing there? <clears throat> like, all the all the cats and dogs that get out at night. <laughs> dude, I, I just I tried fighting them off with a shoe. I got lucky that they were kind of scared of me, but they did try to growl at me for for a little bit. Which, oh, no. Yeah, I was a little terrified. I was just like, oh yeah, shoot. Yeah, that's kind of scary. But I mean, I'm alive. I mean, alive and well, still here. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, they didn't eat me. I just, I definitely lost a shoe though, so I was, you know, a little disappointed. But yeah, things, uh, things, of, things of that nature, uh, they haven't happened here too much. Uh, other than like one time, I uh, went to Austin by myself, and um, mm-hmm. I told everybody it was my birthday, which it was two days ago, and people were buying me shots and all this other stuff. And basically, uh, so my Airbnb told me to deadbolt it when I was done you know, coming in and out of the house. That way, you know, I could, you know, I don't know why they wanted me to deadbolt it, but I was all right, okay. And uh, so obviously I went out to, what is it, 6th Street and um, didn't deadbolt it because obviously my car was there. I wasn't going to drive. So she thought that because my car was there that I was already home and I was just, you know, sleeping. So she deadbolted it. So I was passed out. I made it back to the Airbnb. Door was locked. I couldn't get in. Because of the deadbolt, yeah. So basically, I i mean, I don't remember that part, but I remember waking up on the porch of my Airbnb just passed out on the floor. Oh, no. Yeah. And I remember that part. I remember trying to open it. It didn't work. And then just woke up again in my car. And yeah, that was... Oh, yeah, definitely. But, you know, it is what it is. And I, again, I survived. So I'm still here. But... um uh, I was going to ask you a couple other things uh, regarding, uh, was it, um, oh yeah, so, so, okay, so for for those people that are ever interested in owning a horse, like, what is, what is, uh, taking care of a horse, you know, entail, like, how, like, how much are you looking to spend, and not necessarily buying the horse, but how much are you looking to spend on raising it and such? 
Yeah, well, it just kind of depends exactly what you want to do. So, and it also depends on your area. So, having a horse, you if you have property, like at your house, then obviously that's going to be a lot cheaper. But you're going to have to do a lot more labor. So you have to mm-hmm. build a stall, clean the stall, feed it twice a day, and then for me, I don't have land to kind of keep horses on, so I board my horses. So I keep it unstable. Um, I pay about like four fifty a month per horse in Northern California at the stable I'm at. Oh wow! But places are cheaper, so you get some places that are like two hundred bucks. You got other places that are, are eight hundred bucks. If you got training fees and stuff like that, that definitely adds up. So just kind of depends where you're at. We can't really give a good number how much hay it is, how much you want to take care of it, kind of what your area has to offer. But I definitely recommend going in, doing a couple lessons and kind of getting a good trainer before going out and buying a horse only because there's a lot of crazy horse people out there. So they'll say that horse is super great and their kid rides it and it's awesome. And you go and get the horse, you ride it. You're like, oh, it's awesome, awesome. I love it. You buy it, take it home. And then the horse is crazy. And it's probably because they drugged it or they lied about it. And so, and then they won't take them, they won't give you your money back, won't take the horse back. So I've seen a lot of people burned in that way. Oh, wow. Like chief horse sellers. So always, always, always get somebody that kind of knows what they're doing and kind of get a good grasp of the area and sellers and buyers to kind of figure it out. Yeah, I mean, that's something like actually, I would imagine owning a horse is something definitely uh, more difficult to do if you live in the city. Uh, because of yeah. all his expenses. But even in like Los Angeles, um, there's still horse stables in Los Angeles, and I don't, I don't think New York so much. But I'm just trying to think about big cities. But Los Angeles sells horses, and when I lived in Newport, like there's horse stables there and horse stables in Huntington. Yeah, they're a little bit more crammed mm. than like more of a country setting, but we still have them. You know, just kind of gotta figure it out. I was gonna tell you, uh, is it true that um, like if you have one horse, you kind of have to get another horse because they're they get really lonely or something like that? I say if you're keeping it at your house, you definitely need to get it a friend. So if you have a horse at your house and you just have one horse, then you can buy like a goat or a sheep or like a mini horse or a mini donkey or something as a friend because they are herd animals. Um, but obviously, if you're boarding it when there's other horses on the property, then you don't need another one. Goats are assholes though dude i don't like goats <laughs> goats yeah. yeah they can kind of be mean but i mean they're ador- like a pet. Who cares? they're adorable when they're like little mini horses i mean little mini goats right like when they're like babies and stuff but then once yeah. like they're older they're just assholes like i like i've um i've been on a rancher's property out here and they're just they just are waiting to like just charge at anybody they see and it's yeah. like dude i can get those little like i think they're called like pygmy goats those are cute which ones Pygmy goats. Pygmy goats? Like the tiny goat. Yeah. Oh. I think I'll just stick to eating goat, you know? No, thanks. <laughs> no, uh, uh, yeah, because somebody would, uh, apparently, well, I didn't take their word for it because, I mean, they don't own horses, but they claim that they know how to, you know, work with them. And they're like, yeah, I know if you get a, if you get a horse, you know, you may, you need to make sure you have another horse with it. Otherwise it's going to get really lonely. It's not going to be good for its health. Yeah. So. She just needs a friend. So even a goat can do that. Yeah. What? Goat, sheep, mini what? horse, mini donkey, regular donkey, not a horse. <laughs> There's a mini donkey. Yeah, they have mini donkeys. Ooh, that sounds fun. What about what about a cow? Can you have a cow in there? I think so. I think it just needs a friend. Ah. Mhm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, my uh, my nephew's dad. I think he's a horse, horse trainer, but I've never actually seen him, like, train a horse. Um, I know you've said that there's some horse trainers that can be kind of jerks to the horse, and that's not necessarily good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. How much time do you need to spend with, like, a horse? Because, I mean, I'm not sure it's, like, like a dog where you, like, like, depending on what dog breed it is, you know, you have to spend so much time with it because it's super active versus, like, super lethargic. Like, how much time do you have to spend, like, riding it and, like, just, you know, basically being its friend? I mean, it kind of just depends on the horse. If you, um, I, my rule of thumb, personally, was always, like, they're only allowed to stay in their stall for two days. 
and then after two days, they need to get out. Some people are like, my horse needs to get out every day. Some people say my horse needs to get out once a week. Some people leave their horse in their stalls till when they feel like going to go see it. So it just kind of depends. You also have like super old horses that maybe don't want to get out of their stall and you just take it for a walk once a day. Or you might have a horse that's super young and hyper and needs a lot of exercise. So you have to get that horse out a lot more. So it really just depends, and it depends on, like, ethically what you think's right for your animal. So some people are, it, it, you know, it just really depends. Like, some people are like, oh, I have to walk my dog every day, and some people are like, oh, I just let my dog out in the backyard. We yeah. can't, like, one's not right, one's not wrong. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to... Oh. Repeat, repeat that again, cause uh, you're going out again. Oh, okay. Something's wrong with the audio. Sorry, guys. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and try again. Is it working now? Yeah, you're good now. Oh my god! As soon as I said you're you're go you're it's going well, all of a sudden it cuts out again. That's okay. All right. So you were saying the same thing with mental health. That's the last part that I was able to get. Okay. So <laughs> it cut out again. I'm sorry. What are you doing with it? Like, are you like messing with it or something? It's sitting right here. Oh, okay. Keep it there. Keep it there. Is it go ahead and say something? Hello. All right. Okay. Same thing with mental health. Okay, so same thing with mental health. Horses have mental health too, so they also need to get out and kind of have a little bit of exercise, and they don't like to sit inside their stall all day. So it's up to you as an owner to also make sure that they're healthy. It's kind of crazy how, to a certain degree, certain animals, they're not that much different than us. Like, you know, like horses need, need a friend. I think mm -hmm, every person yeah. could use a friend if not like, you know, like their significant other or whatever, right? Like sometimes like, you know, your fiance might be like your best friend and that's, you know, good enough. Sometimes you need a little bit more, you know? So I think, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's great that, you know, you definitely found your passion in horse riding. And I, I, I do think that, you know, if you, you could, you can do it correctly and do your, you know, business around your passion, kind of like how you're doing, where you're making sure that you take the time to uh, to make sure that you don't get burnt out from what your passion is, and that way you kind of distinguish it from actually being work, and just you know, so you can still enjoy it like as as a hobby and you know something that you love to do. Yep, exactly. All right, so we're in our last few minutes. Um, so, is there anything that you want to kind of like address regarding some like mental health issues, like something that you kind of like? have thought about like on your own that it's like, well, why aren't people talking about this more? Or why is there any like specific topic that you want to kind of go over? Um, I guess just kind of what I, the note I'd want to finish on is that everybody's different and there's no right way and wrong way to kind of help yourself. So I don't want anybody to feel like, well, if I don't have an activity then I'm not doing things right. Or if I'm not playing doctor, I'm not doing things right. So just kind of everybody does everything different and everybody is different and I think that outdoor activities are great um, and I think they definitely can help you whether it's mentally or physically any other way I, um, but just do what you feel is best for yourself yeah and to add to that like my final thoughts would just be kind of like whether you're a young adult a teen or just an older adult I think it's better I think it's best because, I mean, even like 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 you said, not everything is for everyone, right? Like, sometimes the outdoors might not be enough for somebody else, you know. Um, it's, you know, we're not a one-size-fits-all. Like, that's the one thing that I do want to keep emphasizing, like, throughout this podcast, throughout anything, really. That, uh, you know, the situations that plague us might be different from the next person. Even from somebody within your family, like, you know, like, I know me personally, um, like, even though my family is like the ones, they're the ones that know me the, the most. They probably only know like 20% of what I'm about. Like just because I don't really like kind of like share a whole lot, which is something that I'm trying to change because uh, again, the stigma of like reaching out and like opening up, like I'm trying to not 
fall into that. But I think um, with regards to the outdoors, I mean, like, you know, it may be horse horseback riding. It may be shooting an arrow. I think that the more time you spend doing those things, the less time you spent focusing on, like, social media. And in the sense that, like, like, keeping up with trends and stuff. Like, trends are cool and everything, and, you know, and I know, like, kids are all about trends and stuff. But the less time you kind of put importance on that and the more time you put importance on, like, other things, not necessarily the outdoors, but other things that kind of, like, make you feel good. I think we'll be in a better uh, position overall, but yeah. it's also important that you're not alone. Um, that's kind of one of the things that I'm hoping that as we go along and we bring more people to talk and bring back some other people, like I think people can uh, see that, Hey, you know, we're not, we're not all perfect, even though like you might see me on or see not necessarily me specifically, you might see a certain person doing really well, you don't know what they're really struggling. Like, even if you live with them sometimes, like, I mean, I think that's kind of why uh, certain, like, you know, we have like, the thing about divorce rates going kind of high. But, um, yeah, that's kind of like my two cents on things. And I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. I know you're not either. But, you know, just kind of sharing the benefit of your experience. And I hope that definitely does help some people. Yeah, me too. But before we go, uh, do you want people to look you up on do you have a youtube channel by any chance i don't have a youtube channel but i have an instagram account a facebook account for my business oh you go. Um, and i would definitely love people if they love the podcast or even if they just want to see pretty pictures of horses <laughs> then they can definitely give me a follow so um i think my instagram is like painted star equestrian and same with my facebook page painted star equestrian i should Hopefully be the only one, unless I have some copycats out there. But Painted Star Equestrian. Seems, mm-hmm. seems like a pretty unique business name, so I'm hoping that stands I, out. I think uh, I was going to ask you about your hat, actually, because it's on your hat. Like, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. got my own logo wear. So I have hats, shirts, sweaters. <laughs> I have stickers. I'm about to do the same thing as well. Um, I already have my company name, uh, but... I, I still need to register the domain, so I'm not going to say it yet. But uh, once I get the domain registered, and once because uh, I do have a logo, and I think I shared it with you, didn't I? I think. Yeah, I like the logo. It's really nice. Yeah, so I'm definitely thinking about getting a trucker hat because I do love trucker hats. Um, you know, you should get this type of hat because this one's really nice and it fits really, really nice. And uh, boys and girls love it. Oh, okay. You should get at least offer two different styles because for me, I don't like trucker hats, but I get guys like trucker hats. But as like a more like sporty dad hat, I'm like into this, you know? That's mostly all I wear. Yeah, sporty dad hats. Yeah. <laughs> sporty dad hats and trucker hats. And it's funny because yeah. when I go to a country bar, it's like, you know, I wear boots and just, like, you know, trucker hats. Like, oh, yeah, you look yeah. very, you know, very yeah, with I the country bar. All the time. Just because it's just like, I don't know. I have that COVID roots going on with my hair, so the hat helps right now. <laughs> You're talking about COVID flow. Look at this. Like, my COVID oh, flow. Yeah, you do have COVID flow. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, yeah, gotta like you like I said earlier, gotta do with what you got. So, figured might as well just let it grow. I do kind of see uh, the amount of time that you ladies with long hair spend in the shower, conditioning oh, yeah. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh man, like I I definitely am more empathetic now. So. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. All right. So, remember, uh, you guys that are listening, Painted Star Equestrian, if you want to look at more uh, horse pictures, and you can just check out her six skills. Uh, she definitely has some skills. So, <laughs> and uh, you should definitely make a YouTube channel and, you know, just put, you know, kind of make it like a video blog style and just. Yeah. I'll definitely think about it. Maybe I should. I definitely think you should, but thank you once again for joining me. And, um, I hope you guys that are listening, I hope you guys tune in for the next episode. Um, and by the way, I got a microphone, so I'm hoping the audio is a little bit better from my last two episodes. Um, so we're slowly coming up, still low budget, but slowly coming up. (laughs) Love it. Well, thank you again for having me on the podcast. All right. Well, great talking to everybody. Yeah. Hope to see you soon. And I hope everybody else that's watching and listening enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. All right.